coming your way this morning on Denver 7, a story of resilience while breaking down barriers, how one man living with a disability is making the most of it and inspiring others. Plus, a mysterious fire grabbing attention in the metro, what we know so far. Making myself available digitally has made me connect with so many other women going down in breast cancer. And a little later, it's Mental Health Awareness Month, and one Colorado woman is providing emotional support online as she navigates her own cancer diagnosis. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Welcome to Denver 7 News. I'm Jessica Crawford. And I'm Katie LaSalle. Thank you so much for joining us. Now here's a look at some of what's happening across the metro today. A Denver nonprofit is launching their sober music program. The Phoenix hopes to make a difference in the music community with this special, innovative way to support artists, industry professionals, and fans in living a sober lifestyle. This evening, there will be live music and a network of sober friends to provide support to touring musicians along with other resources. This all starts at 6 o'clock at the Soiled Dove. Well, this year's Honor Flight is taking off and heading to our nation's capital today. Honor Flight takes a very special group of veterans to Washington, D.C. for recognition of their service each year. And in northern Colorado, the festivities kicked off with a caravan at 8 a.m. Our warm temps and melting snow have Breckenridge Ski Resort cutting its season short. Today will be its final day of the season. Of course, there's always next year with the season hopefully starting up in November. And giving you a live look outside this morning, a little bit of haze filtering in over the metro area, but we are under a mostly sunny sky, very little cloud coverage statewide, but are still feeling the impacts from some of those wildfires burning in the Arizona and New Mexico and into portions of our state as well. Taking you live outside over City Park in Westminster, it is a beautiful day though. You can see Westminster looking off to the west. Very uh, clear skies with temperatures right now in the low 60s out at the airport. Upper 60s now moving into downtown. But we have seen some strong winds this morning and will continue to over the northeastern plains sustained from the north northeast right now at DIA at 23 miles per hour. Relatively calm conditions though into downtown through Castle Rock and Aurora. The gustiest winds over the far northeastern plains. Temperatures right now are already in the 70s down through Colorado Springs, Pueblo and Trinidad that and into the mountains some 50s moving in. There are those strong winds from Sterling out through Holyoke, Fort Morgan and Akron. Temperatures later on today will be in the low to mid 70s there and upper 70s downtown. No advisories in place for the metro area. A pretty pleasant Sunday on tap. We'll talk about our next chance for seeing moisture arrive this week still to come. Every marathon runner has their own reason behind taking on the challenge and one runner making his way through the metro this morning is running to break barriers for those living with disabilities. Denver 7's Christian Lopez is live at the Colfax Marathon right now and Christian Major Sergeant Cedric King already completed his race. And King is a double amputee. He's also a retired military veteran. But despite everything he's been through, he is still doing what he loves, and that is participating in marathons like this one. Four, three, two, one, go! Cedric King lost both of his legs when he stepped on an explosive device in Afghanistan. But despite everything, he has become a motivational speaker and an endurance athlete. Today, he participated in a 10K relay race here at the Denver Colfax Marathon. And he says that his faith, friends and family are what keeps him going forward. Sometimes when we can't see the finish line in life, it, it, it breaks your, your spirit a little bit. But races are a great metaphor because you cannot see the finish line from where you start, but you never stop running just because you can't see it. You keep moving, and that's what we got to do in life, too. And he has completed 13 full marathons and six half marathons. Guys, truly a very inspiring story. Live in Denver this morning, I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. Christian, thank you for sharing that. Well, crews are still working to put out a couple of fires across the state this morning. The High Park Fire continues to burn more than 1,100 acres just west of Cripple Creek and is only 10% contained right now. This fire it started on Thursday. More than 100 people have been evacuated. Then the Ute Pass fire in Durango is sitting at 50% containment. That fire burned about 30 acres. The cause is still under investigation as well. Here's video of a fire grabbing some attention in Aurora last night. This is near Havana and Smith Road. Denver Fire says a large pile of Christmas trees being recycled caught fire. No homes have been affected at this point. We'll continue to monitor the situation and provide updates as we learn more. 
Parents, students and teachers held a rally in Aurora this weekend. They are urging the district to keep two elementary schools open. Aurora Public Schools is considering closing Sable and Paris Elementary Schools due to low enrollment there. Well, those who organized the rally say they feel the district isn't considering what's best for the community. We need to actually understand the reasoning by, you know, behind why we're doing what we're doing and figure out, you know, if that's really the best case, the best course of action. In a statement, the APS board said in part, quote, we recognize that this continued uncertainty is both difficult and upsetting. Please know that we take our responsibilities as board directors very seriously and consider every aspect of these critically important decisions, including impact on the community. They will discuss the schools further in a meeting coming Tuesday. My body, my choice. My body, my choice. Hundreds of Coloradans spent Saturday afternoon marching and chanting at the Capitol in support of abortion rights. It's part of the Bands Off Our Bodies movement that had rallies all across the country. Counter protesters were at Colorado's Capitol as well. We received a statement on these protests from Respect Life Denver. It says in part, we acknowledge the deep pain and woundedness that women feel and want them to know that we have answers of hope, healing and empowerment regarding their fertility, as well as their inherent value and dignity. The national formula shortage is putting countless families in a bind this weekend. This is video of a formula giveaway in Houston. Well, the formula was originally designated to be handed out during a national disaster, but they handed it out to desperate families this weekend instead. And as the shortage continues, pediatricians are warning families not to stretch their formula with extra water or cow's milk. And it's also not a good idea to make your own. It can potentially be very dangerous and impact your baby's ability to grow or stay hydrated. When parents think that, well, I'll just make it myself, they can do their baby a lot of harm. It can be very dangerous. So if possible, switch formula brands or look into smaller stores. The White House says it is working to increase supply by enacting several new measures. Those include giving families on government assistance the ability to buy other brands of formula, cracking down on price gouging, as well as importing more supply. Well, the House Oversight Committee has also requested records from four of the largest manufacturers of baby formula. The FBI is now investigating a shooting at a supermarket in Buffalo, New York, as a hate crime after 10 people were killed and three were hurt. The bureau says the incident was racially motivated with violent extremism. The 18-year-old shooter was arraigned last night. Authorities say the shooter allegedly shot several people in the parking lot before entering Topps Friendly Market. He exited his vehicle. He was very heavily armed. He had tactical gear. He had a tactical helmet on. He had a camera that he was live streaming what he was doing. 11 of the 13 victims were black. Authorities say the suspect live streamed the attack as it unfolded. That suspect also threatened a shooting at a local high school graduation last June. State police investigated and no charges were filed at that point. He received a mental health evaluation and some counseling. 908 and we're just getting your Sunday morning started here on Denver 7. Coming up, the Denver Dumb Friends League needs your help. How you can call in and make a difference.